Good morning, DLCE fam. Welcome to our online worship experience. We're so happy that you joined us today. My name is Shanika and I'm the social media coordinator here at Dunamis Life Church. In the month of December, we celebrate the preparation of our Savior Jesus Christ, better known as the season of Advent. 2020 has been a tough year for a lot of us, but here at Dunamis Life Church, we look at December and the upcoming new year as the unexpected gift, like the arrival of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to tune in this Thursday for our Christmas Eve service. We'll be streaming on YouTube and on Facebook. The following Thursday, you can catch our Candlelight New Year's Eve service. Be sure that you're following us on all of our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything that's going on here at Dunamis Life Church. Let's get ready to worship. Good morning, Dunamis Life Church. We are so glad to be with you today to worship and to declare the season of Advent, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he came to save us. He's the solution for our dysfunctional, sin-sick world. We thank God for the coming King, and we declare joy to the world. Hallelujah. This is the good news that we want to spread. We want every person to know that our Lord is come. We want to go and tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Let's go and tell it. Hallelujah.
Hello, glad to have you with us again. I'm always excited for our time together. I want to pray with us and then I want to share a couple of announcements before we get into our word on today. We're going to be in Luke chapter 1, so I need you to go ahead and get your Bibles on this morning and we're going to begin to prepare ourselves for the word. So let's open up in prayer. So God, we thank you and praise you just for an opportunity to gather, uh, to touch and agree in, in your name and in your, by your spirit. We know you expect and love our worship and we love to give it to you. And so we thank you for just an opportunity that we can come before you in your presence, that we can rejoice, we can declare who you are. And we ask now that as our hearts and mind have been open to and prepped for the expectation of the seed of your word, bless us now that we will receive it joyfully, a life, that, a word that will give us life, a life more abundant, a, a life that will be empowered and more than a conqueror. Thank you for bringing us to this moment in this year and in this season. We are so grateful that our hearts are still turned toward you. And so we just ask you to continue to be in our midst and continue to feed us on high. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Say amen with me. And so as we're closing out this year, I'm not sure what your expectation is excitement building, it's relief building because everyone is ready to, to turn the page with regard to 2020. But I want to share a couple of announcements, things that I want you to be mindful of as we uh, prepare to celebrate our, um, the, another holiday, the Christmas season with our loved ones. So the first thing I want you to note is that we sent out via text a uh, reopening survey. We wanted to get your feedback as we prepare our plans and our strategic plan for what reopening looks like us for us to gather in person while at the same time maintaining our long online presence and live streaming. And so if you haven't done the survey, haven't filled it out, we really would like you to do that between now and Christmas. So uh, if you don't have the text, the link is actually in the description of this post of this service. So make sure you click there. You only have to fill it out once. So if you've already filled it out, that we thank you for that. But if you haven't had an opportunity, you feel like you're connected with us, whether you are part of our online uh, congregation or in the area where you would um, consider gathering in person with us, please fill that out and we will be grateful uh, for that because we definitely want your feedback as we begin to prayerfully seek God's guidance on what the new year brings for us. The other thing that's coming up uh, in this week is our end of year consecration. Actually, before I share that, let me just talk about this week. So Christmas Eve, we have a great Christmas service plan for you. We're excited. Uh, our, our children will be participating. So it's just a great opportunity on Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. We want to take a few moments of your time, gather your family, and begin to uh, share and worship with us as we celebrate Christmas and continuing to remind ourselves what is not just the reason, the purpose, and the meaning for which we're gathering and celebrating. So be on the lookout. We're going to be um, premiering uh, Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. And so we're looking forward to sharing that with you. And so as I mentioned, I started to talk about our end of year consecration. At the end of every year, the last three days of the year, so that is going to be December 29th through the 31st. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we normally um, uh, close out our fast after our New Year's Eve service that we typically have at 8 p.m. And we'll share more about what our plans are for New Year's Eve um, next week with regard to that. But this is an opportunity for you to really holistically, uh, a spiritual fast and consecration, but also a holistically where we can detox our bodies and begin to um, prepare to just really get our bodies back in balance, get our, um, our, our, our chemical balance back together, begin to shed sugar and so many other things. This is going to be a liquid diet. And what we mean by that, you can basically have anything that doesn't require you to chew. So that's a smoothie. That could be soup, um, you know, anything that's a creamy soup or, or brisk. You can have soup. You can have, um, you can blend up a lot of different uh, smoothies and nutritional drinks. So it's just an opportunity for us to, be, to do a cleansing and also a uh, physical cleansing and a spiritual cleansing. And we're going to be providing more resources with regard to that. If, um, if you are new to fasting, then we will probably recommend the Daniel's fast for you. 
So that will have some uh, food restriction. It's still a very uh, healthy uh, diet. And I would begin to ask you to begin to increase your water intake and decrease the sugar and caffeine leading up to that. So that as you enter the, the three days of consecration, that your body would begin to already uh, gradually have um, shifted in the right direction. So we're going to be providing more resources, more specific things uh, with regard to that. So please keep those things in mind. Please fill out the survey. Make time to, uh, to view and to participate in our Christmas Eve service um, on, on uh, I guess it's Thursday at 7 p.m., as well as start making preparations for our um, consecration or end-of-year consecration. So I'm excited about um, everything that God is doing, and I'm very grateful for, I guess most of all, I'm, I'm not even looking forward to what I'm receiving. I'm just thankful for what I have, and I thank God for um, in this moment for giving us strength, giving us uh, grace and mercy, um, and really being in our right mind when we could have lost and our heart really still being centered on it. I cannot take that for granted, um, all that we've experienced. We lost um, another general, I shouldn't say lost, another general in the gospel transition to glory on this week, on Friday, uh, Bishop Iona Lot. And so there are significant people that are among us that have um, we have great memories for, and I'm trusting God in what God was sharing with me. One thing we, he has encouraged me is at the end of this year, everyone, every single individual, those uh, dear and close to our heart, either present with her or now um, present with the Lord, they will be um, present or accounted for. No one will be um, unaccounted for. And so um, he has, he has, he has us in the palm of his hand. He has written our name in the Lamb Book of Life, and so we are to be encouraged of that. So he, he's still reigning. He's still in control, and so let's begin to turn our uh, hearts, uh, your attention to Luke chapter one. That's going to be our text. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've just been reading the uh, the lectionary text for the season of Advent. So this is the fourth and final Sunday of the season of Advent, where we celebrate the arrival and our expectation of Christmas. And I don't know about you that a lot of times Christmas is centered on usually just the birth of um, Christ, but we also need to understand the purpose of Christ. So God came um, in the flesh, incarnated, that he may be committed to the cross, meaning to our salvation and our reconciliation uh, to God. And so it, we have to, as we talk about the baby in the manger, and the birth of Christ, but we also remind ourselves of the purpose of Christ coming or God coming um, in, in the realm of man in order to redeem us. So let's look at uh, Luke 1. That's, it's the lectionary text for uh, this Sunday of Advent. And we're going to be reading the story. So we're going to start at Luke 26. We're going to pick up the, the first part of the chapter. We're going to look at this conversation that uh, the angel Gabriel has with Mary. He has the previous verses um, from 5 to 24. He, he visited Elizabeth first. Um, and so here he is. He is. We're going to look at this conversation, the dialogue and the interaction that he has with, with Mary. Now, Gabriel is mentioned three times in the Bible. He's mentioned twice in this chapter, as I said his, his conversation with Zachariah and Elizabeth, husband and wife, and his conversation here that we're going to look at, take an intimate look at with Mary. But he's also mentioned in the book of Daniel. He comes to interpret Daniel's dream to give him insight with regard to his dream. So we're looking at this conversation. So I want you to pay attention. We don't um, have our scripture on the screen today. You know, our equipment is, um, um, is being utilized um, somewhere else, but... Uh, so I bear your patience, but you're going to need your Bible. So whether it's your Bible app on your phone or your physical Bible, Luke chapter one, starting at verse 26. Um, and we're, we're going to read down to verse 38. So I'm trying to decide whether to read it in chunks or read it all together, because I want you to catch this because there's significance in this conversation and I don't want you to miss it. So let's go ahead and um, read and we're going to um, see how God leads us. So now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth 
And so that sixth month is really referring to the previous verses where it's the sixth month of Elizabeth's um, pregnancy. So uh, the angel Gabriel is sent um, by God to the city Galilee, a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin who is engaged to a man whose name is Joseph of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And so what we've been sharing with you um, the previous weeks, we've always been trying to connect that uh, Christ's birth is connected to the fulfillment of prophecy. And so here, again, we understand that there is a prophetic that out of the house of David shall come a king, right? And so he, Joseph is a descendant of David. And so we already see that the beginnings or the lineage of what has been prophesied is beginning to be recorded here as well. And he's coming um, and he spoke to Mary the Virgin and watch 28 and coming in, he says to her. So this is what he says, his opening, his greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And one thing you will notice about God, and this is very something distinct that you have to remember that's distinct from the enemy, is that God always calls us by how he sees us. He, he calls us by his name, how he sees us. He never calls us out of our name. So he, he greets us. He greets Mary and he says, greeting favored one. So he, on the beginning, he begins to declare how he sees her. And a lot of time God will declare it. And oftentimes he calls us how he sees us, but we don't always see ourselves. And you begin to see um, Mary's um, interaction here um, with the angel. So he says, greetings favored one. The Lord is with you. So you are favored and the Lord is with you. You know, um, you know, our, our, our Catholic brothers and sisters say, you know, um, they always say, hail Mary full of grace. You know, the father, they always say that because she is favored and she is um, the Lord is with you. So she he's reminding her he's opening up to make a declaration of, of what of an assurance that she should have in verse 29. But she says, but. She was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation or greeting this was. Now, the, so what's not obvious to us, if we're reading this, if you don't understand the biblical context of this, is that Mary was not from affluent means. She wasn't well off, right? So she, she is a very humble individual. She's not from humble means. And so when you declare, when she's hearing this, that I am favored and the Lord is with me, you know, she begins to wonder, how can this be, right? She begins to ponder it and she's kind of perplexed. She's debating within herself, how can what you declare and what you have announced to me be true? So as she's having a conversation with the angel, she's also having an internal conversation. And so, and also um, an emotional reaction, which is what we find ourselves to be sometimes when we're, when God is engaging us. And so this is one of the things to be so encouraged that a lot of times God pursues us, right? He, he, he will come intersecting and injecting. He, he will begin to intersect himself in our lives, in our moments. And he begins to declare that you are favored and that I am with you. And so she be, she gets, she's perplexed and she begins to kind of ponder that. And sometimes we find ourselves that when a word is spoken in our life, or even when we read God's words or the promises of God's words, a lot of times we struggle with accepting it as truth and reality for us. Our faith has not been strengthened and have not been matured and is not strong enough to receive it initially. So then God begins to uh, has to begin to engage us in quicken our, our faith and our belief in him to where we can receive what he is trying to sow into our lives. And so that's the first thing we see here is that your favored and the Lord is with you. I need you to say that to yourself. I am favored and the Lord is with me. Say it to yourself. Say it out like that. I am favored and the Lord is with me. And we talked about Emmanuel, the God among us, the God is with me. So no matter what your circumstances this week is or how this year has gone, it has not changed the fact if you are a child of God, if you are walking and living in covenant with him, you are still favored and God is still with you. Your circumstance does not negate or nullify that truth. 
right? We talked about the fact that what, what God's word is, is, is truth for my life. Even though my circumstances, there may be some facts about my circumstances, but God's word is what truth and what is what I began to believe and what my faith is anchored in. And so verse 39, the angel says this to her, do not be afraid. This is another common phrase is that when God is about to speak a word over your life is about to give you his vision for your life. He want, he does not want fear to reign because where fear reign, um, faith cannot, cannot prosper. Faith cannot, um, begin to live and take hold and can't act. So the God is immediately, he says, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. And so, um, Mary, for you have found favor with the Lord. So that's the second time he's mentioned the word favor. He said, God has favored you, right? God is pleased. God has smiled upon you and he's favored for you. Psalms five tells us that God's favor goes before us like a shield, right? And so when you don't have credit, when you don't have, um, uh, the right name, you don't come from the right family. All you need is the favor of God. That is a shield for you. That is what makes the difference. And so in verse 31, are you still with me? And behold, you will conceive. So watch this shift, right? So he's declared twice the favor of the Lord is upon you. He, he, he's declared that um, you um, not to be afraid and that God is with you. He, so you see how he is strengthening or has declared something that her faith has to lay hold of. And then here's what he begins to declare to her. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. There's the prophetic tie again. He will give him the throne and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. His kingdom will have no limits, no boundaries. And so this is all, again, the prophetic utterance now being spoken in her life. This is where the, um, the natural and the supernatural intersecting, where the prophetic and purpose begin to um, intersect. There will begin to overlap in your life. So your, your purpose in Christ is connected to the prophetic word over your life. And so he, she, he begins to explain that you are about to, to conceive and to bring forth a son. And so here's Mary's, she's listening. And then she says in verse 34, Mary said to the angel, how can this be? How can this be possible? Since I am a virgin, right? How can this even be possible? Verse 35, the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the most high will overshadow you. That's a powerful word right there. The, 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 the spirit of God will come upon you. The anointing of God will come upon you. the power of the most high will overshadow you. That is significant it, to, to overshadow is to almost in, um, encapsulate or envelope or cast over you. So the spirit of the most high, the power of the most high is going to overcome. Yeah, this is the immaculate conception, right? But it's more significant than that because the, what's not obvious to Mary in the midst of her trans, um, uh, her transformation that's happening in this text, that oftentimes when we answer the call of God, we really don't know the full implication of all that's going to come out in order for us to navigate, um, that it shall be, and it shall come to pass. And, and, and so when we're, when the proclamation of God's purpose upon our life and in, in, in between the manifestation, we need the, the power of God. We need the dunamis of God, right? To overshadow us. We need the power of the most high to be upon us in order for us to navigate from the proclamation to the, to the manifestation of what he's saying to us. And so he begins to explain, watch this. And for this reason, the child, the Holy child shall be called the son of God because he's not going to be born of the son of man. So she's going to be conceived miraculously a mirror by miracle and by the overshadowing of the Holy spirit. 
and verse 36, and behold, even your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. Right? So now he's, she, she, so her cousin, her relative was barren, old age and barren. So now, now he's feeding her faith, a miracle from her cousin. So now he's letting her know that your cousin or, or your relative, Elizabeth, has conceived a son in her old age. And I've removed the reproach of barrenness from her. And she's now in her sixth month. And so he's, he, he's building her faith. And he says, for nothing will be impossible with God. That's the context of that. We, we, we quoted, nothing is impossible with God. When the supernatural is working in our life, nothing is impossible. So God is about to bring about a miraculous conception and birth. And he says, there's nothing impossible with, with me, right? With me. So when you're favored, when my power is upon you, right? There's nothing that will be able to stop you from feeling your purpose, except for yourself except for our own self-doubt, our own self-worth. And we, we go back to the dilemma, right, of when the greeting was first given. He says, you're favored and God is with you. The only reason why we would be perplexed if we don't see ourselves the way God sees us, that we, we're struggling with um, our own worth and our self-worth. And no matter how accomplished that you are, how successful, you still have moments when you're reaching for your goals that are bigger than you are. You still have moments of doubt that you have to navigate. You have moments of uncertainty where you begin to pause and you then you begin to decide to move forward. And so in this text, a lot of times when we're reading the story, we're talking about the baby Jesus and, and the manger, and we tend to overlook the tension in this text, the theological tension that resides in this text between how can this be and then when we get to the, the, the latter part of, of this verse, we're going to read it in a second when she says, let it be according to your word. The tension between how can this be? And then let it be. You, you feel me? To the, the tension between um, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Y'all, y'all feeling me? And, and, and so that's the, that is the miraculous or the impossible, the, the, the uh, impossible possibility of God. That's Mary's Christmas, not Merry Christmas, but Mary's Christmas. We're talking about Christmas. We're celebrating Christmas on, on this week. The impossible possibility. Somebody say that the impossible possibility of God. And so how do I begin to hear God, listen to him and to begin to walk in it, right? I began to hear him. So let's, let's, let's move on a little bit. I, I got ahead of myself. And so he began to say that she conceived talking back about Elizabeth for nothing is impossible with God. And then Mary says this, or this is our actually fine, our final verse in this passage. And Mary said, behold, I am the bond slave of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from, from her. Let it be according to your word. And so as we read this, you, it's not obvious the transformation of faith that is built and begin. God, I believe, but help my unbelief, the struggle, the tension, as I said before, of how can this actually be? And then God, I fully surrender my full obedience according to what you have said. And so when we look at this text, we look at this verse, it moves us right from the absence of God, right? When we look at um, verse 34, when, she's, when, when she says, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin, right? And the answer came, so it moves us, this whole transformation, watch this, it moves us from uh, the absence of God to verse 35 to the presence of God, and then verse 36 to the fulfillment of the promises of God. Y'all see that? That's, that's the transformation that is taking place in this text. Because without God, we can't do anything. 
And so pre, so before we start with the absence of God, and then God tells us that in me, you can do everything. And then we begin to discover the presence of God. And then finally the, the fulfillment of God. So when it comes, how can this be? And then let it be. And then the manifestation of what God has for us. And so when the angel declares or confesses that there is nothing impossible for God, it finds its deepest meaning in the possibility of bounds. That a, bell, that a barren elderly woman is pregnant and that a young teenage girl from the wrong zip code, from the wrong side of town is favored. And so that's also what we should share with our with our children about Christmas so that we don't miss that the greatest gift is in what God gave us. But most importantly, how can I begin to be all that God has called me to be? That my faith would be, be strengthened. And so she goes from a peasant girl into a, a woman that is purposeful from Mary to the mother of God, right? She goes from the de, uh, denial and debate to discipleship. So everything just shifts for her. And so this is the appropriate transition from Advent to Christmas. Uh, Mary's story moves us, moves us all from who we think we are to what God has called us to be. For who I think I am to what he has called me to be. He shifts my perception of him. The only way I can shift how I see myself is by I first have to shift how I see God. That first, the eyes of my heart needs to be open. I, I need to receive, I need to experience the presence of God in order for me to begin to receive fully all that he has. And scripture testifies of this, the impossible possibilities of God. The scripture, the Bible testifies of this. Write this down. We don't have, have time to turn there, but, but Genesis 18 and 14. Genesis 18 and 14 says, is there anything too hard for God? So I'm asking you right now where you sit in your home, wherever you may find yourself, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything in your life? And then Job 42 and two says this, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. That's another way of saying that which God has said is going to come to pass. Right. His word, when, when the scripture says his word will not return unto him void, it simply means that the word of God is going to accomplish what God intended for it to be comp to accomplish. That's simply what it says, that it's going to be successful. It's going to prosper. Job 42 and two says, I know that you can do all things and that know that none of your purpose of yours can be thwarted, can can be um, defeated. And then I give you one more Jeremiah 32, 17. Again, the scripture, the Bible testifies of itself. It touches and agree with itself. It confirms itself. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, ah, Lord, it is you who has made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Hallelujah. Nothing. It's too hard for him. Nothing is too hard for him. And so, beloved, I don't know where you find yourself right now. You, you, you may find yourself in that early, early part of the text where you're debating, you're kind of perplexed, you're kind of confused. Because maybe you have already received a word from God, a promise from God, but your current circumstances does not provide evidence of it. And it has left you um, causing your, 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 your faith and your expectation to get tired, right? Because my, my circumstance is not in agreement. And so you may find yourself, how can this be, God? How is it? And so I want to encourage you that to embrace, right, the impossible possibilities of God. And I, again, I, I know this season has been tough, 
but I pray that God gives you patient endurance. What is endurance? The ability to stand up under the weight of something, right? That you, that you'll be able to bear it and not buckle under it, but to be able to have the strength to bear it, you know, like an ox. And so I want you to enjoy your family. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be depressed. I don't want you to have anxiousness and anxiety of what you don't have any control over. But I want you to focus on God. I want you to be grateful. I want your attitude to be one of gratitude. And say, God, I thank you for what I have. And that which I still wait for, that which does not remain, does not change the fact of how good you are. And so go celebrate the true meaning, the true understanding, the true purpose of Christmas and understand why this is for us. And then begin to bear witness and to testify as the scripture has said, testify to one another and to encourage someone else in this time. And so thanks again for t uh, tuning in, hanging in with us toward to all the way to the end. And then be sure to join us again on Wednesday, on Thursday. I keep thinking Christmas is on a Wednesday, but Thursday, Christmas Eve at seven o'clock. So be blessed, be encouraged. God bless you.